Hello to you once again and welcome to my transit series at Zidam Astrology. This is for the period April 21st to May 5th, 2022. Join me on this journey. As you know on ZidamAstrology.com, I like to give you information so that you can understand what is happening and why it is happening and why I specifically do what I do. This slide continues to just give you information on some of the terminology that I use uh, when I describe the nakshatras which are the stars you know the zodiac which are the rasis those are the signs and the potters a new term for those who don't follow Vedic astrology but I do and this is just giving you a heads up on exactly what I mean or what I'm speaking about when I talk about the division of the sky so that I have gone through this slide on my previous videos you can view those or you can always drop me a line or send me an email at zeta55 at outlook.com so I can answer any questions or queries you may have I urge you to share sign up subscribe and also follow my videos thank you so much okay for this period I am um, looking at April 21st to May 5th and we are looking at the element card that is going to be chosen or selected for us to understand what is happening with us and that element card is fire and remember the element trine for fire is Aries, Leo and Sagittarius and specifically these are where the Gandhanta points are at in terms of Vedic astrology so that let us now see what is the graha that we are going to choose and it's just a different pack of cards or deck of cards that i'm using but it's the same uh, grahas in it and today's choice is moon so we're looking at our intuition or psychic ability or emotions hidden secrets that is what moon is all about it's all about mental acuity mental capacity and capability this is what moon is about so let's see the Baba now that we are going to select for this period for Vedic astrology at zidamastrology.com and let's give it a good shuffle and here we go let us see what is the house that the divine messages are asking us to concentrate Ooh, it's the third house the third house the third house is all about communication it's all about your throat your speech uh, courage your siblings uh, let us see what is the chakra wisdom now and that chakra wisdom card it has been going back and forth between um, choices and, and pathways for us and decision making what would be the card for this period and that card is wisdom wisdom which is aligned to the anahata chakra or the heart chakra so that wisdom and wisdom is all about Jupiter the guru he expands he teaches he is the uh, significator of uh, education is a significator for marriage for women so that you know at the end of the day what is our heart telling us to do so let's see what the deity or who is the deity who will be surrounding our energies for this period and that deity is its mother earth which is boomy but we have two cards being stuck here so that uh, here we go so this is Bhumi, Mother Earth. And Mother Earth is all about fertility, all about the environment, all about um, our natural resources and how we treat our natural resources. So what is the environment around you? Is it stable? Is it unstable? Are you living on a cliff or in an earthquake prone zone? Is it the hurricane season for you or the tsunami uh, period? what is the earth doing for you in this period and that's you know we need to look at it 
And as you know, I, I love the tetractor spread for this because it aligns itself to the grahas and the elements of Vedic astrology so that I feel very comfortable using it. And this week's um, or this period, because we are dealing with a period, April 21st to May 5th, let us see what the tetractor spread is going to bring to us for the period so that we can enhance the transit of the grahas by reading these cards simultaneously with them or in consequential order and the premise of the cards for this period is the queen of cups so that is the foundation of this reading then we have the hermit so the queen of cups and the hermit then we have the sun very good card a very good card this is the sun and then we have let's see the two of wands the two of wands again we have some kind of choices or decisions to make the five of swords is the next card five of swords temperance so we have three cards dealing with the external environment which we have no control over the two of pentacles again choices and decisions and juggling finances then we have the king of pentacles interesting two and king mm. then the knight of cups the knight of cups and our final card for this spread is the ace of swords so there we have it the tetractor spread for the period april 21st to may 5th and let us see what the transit of the grahas will bring with this analysis of these cards righty then let's get started on the uh, analysis of the cards in the tetractor spread and the energies that we got with them and the premise or foundation of the reading for this week is all about the queen of cups and who is the queen of cups the queen of cups is a excellent listener people open up to her very easily you know her cup is a well of deep wisdom she's mature she's loving she's nurturing uh, sh people share things with her they seek her advice on life and she controls her emotions and you know she meditates on the situation when difficult decisions has to be made she's guided by her feelings and speaks from her heart so it's all about love you know this woman is there for everyone and offers her shoulders readily for those to lean on or cry on you know however when problems arise in her own life she really has anyone to turn to because she's a loner she's sitting there on her throne by herself she's pretty comfortable you know she is relaxed her legs are crossed she has one foot in the water and one foot crossed with a glass or a goblet on her knee but she's relaxed she's calm she's serene you know people are used to this queen having all the answers and so readily assume that her life or her relationship is perfect but as we can read from the cards she's not she's not perfect she's lonely she's alone she's in isolation you know as a, as a result she may have to keep her problems to herself while continuing to help or comfort those around her and you know the queen of cups is a card that is aligned to the moon it is also aligned to the zodiac sign cancer obviously which is the natural fourth house of the color purush of the zodiac signs so that we have aries Taurus, Gemini, Cancer. That is the fourth house, the natural fourth house. And that natural fourth house is all about home, all about comfort, all about assets, all about your mother, all about emotions. And the chakra for the Queen of Cups here is the Ajna chakra, which is the brow or the, the third eye chakra, the, the card of intuition. And you know, the Queen of Cups is a matured feminine person who is loving, warm, tender, um you know you have to do something romantic you can express your feelings follow your heart be caring and supportive think deeply and about the situation you know find the inner beauty and this is this is the queen of cups and the queen of cups is extremely sensitive 
and unfortunately this can you know cause her to get easily upset by other people's comments or casual remarks so sometimes we might say that she has a thin skin but because of her maturity she holds it in she controls her emotion as a result friends and family may feel the need to treat her with kid gloves because you can probably see the the discomfort with her when you know she takes things or or person's casual remarks personally you know but in, with the queen of cups the queen of cups is really telling you trust your intuition uh be the peacemaker follow your heart be sensitive to the feelings of others while expressing your own feelings so there's something that you need to talk about there's somebody that you need to care about yeah, there's somebody that you need to be sensitive to battles may come up quarrels may come up arguments may come up but be the peacemaker and in being the peacemaker use your intuition and this is what the queen of cups the foundation is telling us and let we will find out how this queen of cups is going to deal with the transit of the grahas Hey everyone this is the transit of the grahas or the placement of the grahas on the 21st of april 2022 in the division of the sky we see the zodiac sign here from aries to pisces giving us the the grahas that are posited so this is aries here and we have the sun rahu and mercury we have jupiter in pisces venus and mars in Aquarius, Saturn in Capricorn, Moon is in Sagittarius, and we have Rahu and Ketu on the 180 axis here, where Ketu is in Libra, Rahu is in Aries. But because we have Sun, Mercury, and the Ascendant, well, not too much the Ascendant, but Sun and Mercury in Aries with Rahu, we find that we are now leaving the Kal Amrita Yoga and we are moving on to a chaotic period but better we are not feeling you know so pressured by our spiritual needs and becoming a fanatic of anything so that here we are now looking at Saturn let's look at Saturn um, in Capricorn and Saturn is at 29 degrees Capricorn and Saturn is the atma karaka so saturn is the desire of the soul for this period so what is it we are desiring saturn here aspects jupiter in pisces with his third aspect at 12 percent as he is at uh, 29 degrees in capricorn and jupiter is at one degree in pisces which is this right so that we have jupiter getting a 12 percent um aspect from saturn from his third aspect and that 12 percent is a harmonious one even though jupiter and saturn are uh, enemies the aspect is just 12 percent so it just a, a, a little above the semi sextile um aspect known in the western world and it is a minor aspect so it's harmonious it, it doesn't really bring the enmity that we expect from saturn and um, Jupiter and Saturn's aspect shows where we have to focus our attention um, its influence shows where we have to practice the most discipline in order to reap uh, the results of our labor so what Jupiter is in his own home in Pisces and Jupiter is all about the sensibility in Pisces and you know how we deal with our emotions and how we think about others it is the natural 10th house of isolation and where we need to meditate but jupiter is all about wisdom you know jupiter is all about wisdom so he's a guru he's a teacher remember we spoke about that but um the saturn's third aspect can bring fear and, ex and anxiety since we feel so much responsibility towards those houses so if jupiter is your uh, fourth house you re feel responsible for the family you know for your mother especially if it's your third house you'll have some kind of responsibility towards your siblings if it's in ninth it's your father so you know this is why i keep telling you 
at various times to please recall that you know your kundali your birth chart is unique to you this is just the potential of what could be happening but if you want to know especially for your house and and your birth chart you need to get a reading for your birth chart you know sometimes these things generally resonate with you but but most times it would not because this is not your birth chart i don't know where your house is full i don't know where your ascendant is so this is just a reading generally of what could be happening and what may be the potential with jupiter in pisces with saturn in capricorn and you know et al or whatever else the grahas or planets are posited in and here we have saturn also aspects cancer and libra so that what are your houses what is the houses of cancer and libra for you you know because saturn is going to bring some kind of anxiety or fear or discipline to those houses for you you know it can show you where to focus your attention because some things may be activated in those houses because saturn is um aspecting those houses in cancer and libra now and if you have the saturn mahadasha remember we spoke about the cycles of life so if you are going through the saturn mahadasha then it it makes it more important for you you know to look at this um relationship saturn himself currently is not aspected by any other planet so can be unrestrained in how he's going to bring justice and karma and the law to you you know so this is how we need to look at it in terms of saturn in capricorn right now and venus and mars are in are uh, in aquarius and since aquarius is a revolutionary sign it's a sign of creativity of independence of free thinking you know people with mars and aquarius can inspire revolution in all kinds of fields including new ways of thinking um in biology and medicine and new new theories in science taking you can take this to the very highest level in terms of nobel prize prize winners in their various fields you know where something revolutionary is happening could there be something revolutionary going to happen with covid-19 we don't know but you know it, it could happen because right now with venus and mars in aquarius um people with will will give you that kind of free thinking that kind of revolution because also people with venus in aquarius are likely to be blessed with original thought and picking up on new ideas entering society so here venus will be an enabler for mars so that you know if you are thinking outside the box or you you are accustomed doing things um differently where you don't follow fashion or follow um someone doing things as they as they do monkey see monkey do as i say you will be um given uh, support by venus and if this is your first house it will be you specifically if it is your 12th house it might be persons in like um you know institutions mental institutions hospitals in isolation jails um any kind of sanatorium any kind of um probably ashrams you know so this is what venus and mars is going to bring new thinking revolution they will be the ones who will lead the revolution thinking before the masses you know follow so they will be the innovators the creators um and these people venus uh, who is you know venus born in um aquarius they are likely to have a talent for technology and computers and a love of all kinds of of gadgets and then we come to jupiter in um pisces which is his own house and since jupiter leads us to excess you know you may not know when to draw the limits here because you are very comfortable in this house jupiter is very comfortable and we hope that you this is not your second house you know while jupiter may expand your resources and your assets and and your material um financial stability it can also expand it in terms of waste in terms of doing things without thought because the person in jupiter with jupiter in pisces is likely to be artistic and almost psychic in some ways so you have that sense of being sensitive to others needs and you may overdo it you may stretch yourself so thin that you might be unconscious of what you are going to do or, uh, or what you are going to do to yourself you know 
while you are blessed with thoughts and ideas that do not come from the normal verbal communication with other people because you are Jupiter in um, Pisces you have that intuition you have that um, that psychic ability you can you can bring harm to yourself because you can overdo it you know for this reason you need period of solitude to understand and reconnect with your own thoughts and desires so this is what Jupiter is in Pisces and then we have Sun Mercury and Rahu in Aries and Sun and Mercury Sun and Rahu, sorry, will be conjunct in on in on around May 13th. So that's beyond this period that we are dealing with. So I'll pick that up in the next video. And Sun is assaulted, is exalted here in Aries up to 10 degrees. And with the exaltation, you know, he illuminates everything. He has this need to be impulsive, this need to be in, independent. And here too, Mercury can be creative in his messages so that the truth may be hidden or can be deceiving in its intent because Mercury right now is very close to Rahu. Mercury is 25 degrees Aries moving towards Rahu who is moving towards Aries at 29 degrees Aries. So Mercury here in um, Pisces, sorry in Aries is an independent thinker you know. Um, you may want to speak more than listen. You might be a little bit argumentative you might be unrestrained a little bit in your speech um, you you are quite impulsive when it comes to communicating here in this period and you often use very strong words so you are inventive adventurous um, impatient with opposition or delays so that you need to just understand your speech here and who you might be uh, communicating with in that manner or, or if that manner is the right way for you to communicate. Sun in this position um, complements the, the fire of Mars who is the owner of Aries and you get a lot of abundant energy and, and self-confidence and regeneration because Mars is the aggressor. So Sun here illuminates that aggression and that passion and that energy. So you can regenerate yourself, you know, all the time. Uh, Rahu here is an airy planet, while Mars, as I said, is a fiery planet. So air fans the fire, making persons and issues a bit reckless and impulsive and always ready to fight without thinking of the implications. However, Rahu is a clever planet because remember, Rahu is the head of the beast, head of the dragon, head of the, the uh, cobra, the snake. It affords the native with a lot of intelligence and a sharp mind too. So again, which house is Aries for you? Is it you that you will have this sharp mind and this aggressive behavior and this, this recklessness and impulsiveness? Or is this your 10th house, your house of career, where your profession is going to be affected by this conjunction? Is it your sixth house where your work your routine work, your day-to-day -day work is going to be affected. So again, this is what I keep saying, you know. This is a general reading of how the planets operate during this period in the um, zodiac signs that they are posited in and also the nakshatras, which, you know, that's a different video. But, you know, this is how we need to look at the transit of the grahas. And then we have, we've dealt with the queen of cups in the... Um, tetractus spread and that is just for clarification and the Queen of Cups is all about controlling your emotion and being isolated a little bit and understanding that she is controlling her emotions so again with Sun Mercury and Rahu in Aries where we see impulsiveness and a fiery planet and you know you you the airy sign of Rahu fanning the fire in Aries then we need to be the Queen of Cups here Whichever house is this for you as Aries in your Kundalini, then you need to apply the thinking of the Queen of Cups here. Rein in your emotions a little bit, you know. We also have here the Hermit. The Hermit in the um, Tetractus spread that is the Dark Forces. And that Dark Force is what is your challenges, you know, what, what, what is happening with you. 
where are you going with the um, cosmic reaction to your state of being and it's the hermit and the cosmic reaction the deities they are telling you you know use a little bit of wisdom and remember the chakra wisdom card is what we um, pulled for this period the chakra wisdom is about your heart your heart is about your emotions your emotions are with the moon and the moon is the card of the queen of cups so it's telling you isolate yourself a little bit don't put yourself out there you know take that journey that you meditate you you learn on the hilltop just like um the messengers of god you you learn the wisdom and you come with that light shining in the pathways in front of you so that you can be the hermit and you know um distribute or expand the wisdom that you have gained while meditating while being that loner and then we have the sun in the cosmic forces that guiding you and the sun is telling us you know what this is the the principle of the light the sun wants to shine the sun wants to give you abundance the sun wants to give you energy it wants to give you everything because you have worked and you are now coming to that um, place where you have accepted whichever God you have accepted based on the Kal Amrita Yoga for the past few months you are now in your stride you know things are changing for you Jupiter is expanding the Sun is in Aries the Sun is is creative the Sun is independent the Sun is um, fiery and it's being enabled by Mars so that all your actions are going to lead you to abundance and success so that is what the sun is here it is the light is the cosmic light shining on you and then we have the destroyer and the destroyer is what needs to be removed to to move forward and what is this destroyer this destroyer is the two of wands and what is the two of wands the two of wands is there telling you again that you know you have the bird in hand it is showing you the bird in hand you have everything you have worked hard you are now sitting relaxing look around you you know hold those two of ones one is tied to your hand one is tied to your feet you want to hold on to your material things but you want to take action but, but your action is is tying you down your action is tying you down because you want to be reckless you can't be reckless because you know you have to think about your actions so this is you have to think you can't you can't just take action you must move forward then we have the five of swords and the five of swords is all about you destroying or defending yourself you being maybe a bully at times because this is what sun and rahu and mercury is telling you and you are going to be a bully with your words not with your action you are going to be a bully with your words so because remember mercury is in aries here where you are going to have um the and mercury is also an airy planet so that mercury here is going to be given uh support by mars who will fan the flames of you being aggressive and and rebellious in your speech so that the five of swords here is telling you what helps you maintain a balanced life it is not it is not about fighting it's about listening it's about looking around you and seeing that you have already destroyed um, things that need to be, be destroyed you need to defend your position but defend your position by clarity because these swords are all about intellect so think about what you are going to say to people because you have taken the action and now you have to make amends you know that is what sustains and how how is this creation going to help you again the creator explores what drives you in new direction and you have the temperance card here and the temperance card is all about balance you have one foot in the water and one foot on the earth so one foot in the emotions and one foot on the stable um, bull or the, the, the aggressive bull but you need you need to look at things in a new perspective because the water is flowing from the bottom um, cup to the top cup it is not flowing as its traditional way it's it's flowing backwards so look at things differently have a new perspective on how you are going to deal 
with the issues being brought about by Sun, Mercury and Rahu in Aries. You know, Saturn is conjuncting, uh, not conjuncting, Saturn is aspecting Jupiter with a third aspect. But as we said, that's a harmonious aspect. So you don't need a balance there. You need a balance in Aries. So which house is Aries for you? Check out Zedam Astrology and, and request your report, you know. And then we have, we have Moon in Sagittarius, which is basically every two days, you know, Moon in Sagittarius is telling you think about your um, spiritual behavior because from Sagittarius is really the battlefield because Sagittarius is a natural ninth house of religion where religions clash with each other here you know the religion and the religious fanatics with wisdom because Jupiter is the owner of Sagittarius and he's the guru he's the teacher he wants to bring wisdom to the battles between um, the religious uh, things that we we look at we read and people want to bring to our attention we need to analyze that and that is where the battle is between wisdom clarity and fanaticism so that we call sagittarius the battlefield and we have moon there right now k2 is in libra where it is being balanced so this is where we have temperance now so that our spiritual behavior is being guided by our materialistic behavior or vice versa and then we have how do we cope with everyday life we are still juggling with our finances right now we are looking up rather than around and down we may have to take that journey or that trip we may have to you know move away from our native land or move to another area with a new job because we are still juggling finances the dog there is coming with a, a paper bag in his mouth maybe with lunch um, with something for us to eat but this is a faithful friend who will be there who will be guiding us who will be helping us who will be having our backs you know for us to cope with the everyday life so that while sun mercury and rahu are going to give us some aggression we have saturn and jupiter here in capricorn and pisces in their own homes where they are very comfortable helping us have a harmonious relationship between these two houses for whichever Capricorn and Jupiter is for you and then we have our emotions how are we going to explore our emotions and the king of cups or the king of pentacles sorry is how we explore our emotions the king of pentacles is all about this mature individual who has the devil on one side and the angel on the other side so that you are always thinking about things of how you are going to hoard or spend your assets or your resources and the king of pentacles here is all about abundance all about resources so that you can explore your emotion right now is concentrated on your finances because remember the two of pentacles is also how you coping with red everyday life and it's centered on the resources that you have but there are opportunities for you to, to create those resources and to to have a new channel or a new area where resources may flow from with that um, two of pentacles travel option so that the king of pentacles is you're very comfortable right now with your emotions in um, with your resources you are you are comfortable a little bit but you're still seeking ways and means in which to uh, increase that that uh, resource that you have and then we have your current strategies and thoughts is with the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Cups are going to bring you messages of love messages of relationships messages where you might have to enter into a partnership you know and again all these cards are telling you rein in your emotions you know hold you see how the night is there reigning in that beast of a fish that beast of a, the emotion that wants to just jump and, and move away the knight of cups is telling you rein in your emotions a little bit and this is all concentrated on aries you know it's all concentrated on aries where sun mercury and rahu have that independent that freedom that revolutionary thinking and then what is your will ambition for this period it is the ace of swords and the ace of swords is telling you that you want to create something new by your intellect or through your intellect 
you want a new beginning by you thinking and not doing so probably you want to sit down and write you want to sit down and meditate you want to isolate your, yourself a little bit and do a little bit of yoga you don't want to do that hard work you may have a garden you may have farmland that it needs to lie fallow for a little bit you know you don't want to uh, dig the soil you you or you may you want to turn the soil but then you want the soil to rest a little bit so you yourself want to rest you want a new beginning yes it's it's a double-edged sword but on one side is hard work on one side is rest so that your ambition right now is really to rest to have peace to have harmony and this is what Saturn and Jupiter is giving you peace and harmony your mind is in a mental battlefield in Sagittarius but K2 is going to balance your mental um, tension with your spiritual side because remember I always say K2 is that planet which says been there done that you know um, so whichever house Libra is for you it's going to tell you okay I'm not going to worry here because I've been through this already I have reached a stage where I can't be bothered anymore I need to think differently I need to have a new perspective temperance is telling me I need to have a new perspective I need to look at things differently because for me to move on for me to have that rest I need to be the ace of swords so these are the cards for the transit of the Grahas beginning April 21st 2022 Okay, let's see what the energies are surrounding the transit of the Grahas since we have gone through the Grahas and the um, Tetractor spread. So we first here have the Wisdom card and again Wisdom speaks to maturity, support, calculated risk against stupidity. And this is where we are probably focusing on Aries where we have um, Sun, Mercury and Rahu allowing us to either take that calculated risk or become stupid so wisdom in you know it's all about you being wise you being mature you making a decision that can be supported so this is what wisdom is telling you for the energies for the transit and then we have moon and in Vedic astrology the moon is the second planet after the Sun you know in order of the nine planets and it's a factor of the mind mother mental state morale uh, material things happiness peace wealth and in terms of your body it's your eye your left eye and your chest according to astrology the moon is the Lord of Cancer which is the fourth house and you know moon currently for the period April 21st to 30th the moon is in the waning stage and this mooning this moon in the waning stage means it's in Krishna Paksha and when this waning stage is upon us it ask, it asks us not to act you know rather it's a request to listen to our intuition and be in our bodies at the moment you know look into your emotional self and see what is really happening are you suppressing it if you are stagnation can occur blockages and points of pain will accompany that that stagnation you know that's why the waiting moon it's a time to look inward when you look inward you can recognize these blockages and release some or all of them you know but try to tap into your intuition here so that your moon is telling us again don't make that reckless and impulsive decision that Sun and Rahu wants us to make or that Mercury wants us to be aggressive and and you know speak without thinking thought here is important thought is important and you can help yourself by thinking so this is the message of the wisdom card and the moon card for the period the energies of the cards here continue with the third house or the third barber the fire element and Bhumi who is mother earth 
and the third house is really about the house of brothers and sisters. In Vedic astrology, we call it the Sahaja Bhava, and this is about decisiveness, courage, uh, younger brothers and sisters, neighbors, um, the ability to realize expectations, your memory, strength, sometimes short trips you know the significator here is Mangal who is Mars and he's all about energy and courage and remember Mars and Venus is in Aquarius right now and they want to re rebel they want to bring you thinking they want to have innovation and creativity so that that energy is here the fire is here which, which is Mars you know because the fire trine remember the fire trine is Aries which is owned by Mars, uh, Leo, the Sun, and then we have Sagittarius, Jupiter. But remember, Aries and Leo, both owned by Mars and Sun, I in Aries right now in the house of Mars. So that, that is the extra energy and courage that you're going to have. You're going to have strength, you know, communication, but your self-expression, remember your self-expression is... A little marred by mercury here who may be a bit more aggressive than you want to be or a bit more decisive so probably your communication with your brothers and sisters may not be the best for this period so now that you know the potential you know look at it understand that kind of hold back a little bit hold your tongue as we say um, you know by making the right connections you get your idea going with your siblings with your brothers and sisters your younger brothers and sisters and probably you need to look after them a little bit have some passion about being responsible and then you know um Bumi, mother earth is all about fertility it's all about compassion patience uh forbearance she holds us and carries our weight on on our journey you know both individual and collectively she bears the burden for us um, she bears the burden of looking after the earth that sustains us. You know, it is uh, for this reason that we must uh, remind ourselves every day when we wake up and place our feet on the earth. We are placing it on Mother Bumi so that we have to seek her forgiveness, pray to her, because she is sustained by dharma, by duty. And what, what, what sustains Bumi, which it is um, in... in Sanskrit we say Satyam which is truth, Ritam which is the cosmic law and pious actions and the Ugra Diksha Tapa which is the passionate devotion and penance and the final is the Yagna which are the offerings that holds the earth and sustains it and how she sustains it for us is that she bears uh, like medicinal herbs and plants that are very potent and she makes them available to us to gain health she is fertility personified and uh, contains all the foods that we may obtain through our farming and agricultural pursuits for us to get that sustenance for us to get that nutrition so she is there sustaining us and the deity energy is that she's telling us that you know not only look after ourselves but look after those around us look after the earth look after truth look after the cosmic law by our pious actions have devotion and penance for this period so that the plants can grow so that we can sustain ourselves and those around us and feed ourselves and those around us whether it be with food with love with what our desires are this is what Bhumi is telling us to focus, concentrate, and be responsible. Okay, we have come to the transit of the Grahas again for the ending of the period, April 21st to May 5th. And this is the transit of the Graha showing the pos position of the planets on May 5th. And you can see there's a lot of movements here. There's a lot, a lot of movements. We have Saturn and Mars here now in Aquarius. Mars was in Aquarius before, but Saturn has now joined Mars in Aquarius. We have Venus joining Jupiter in Pisces, and we have Mercury moving across to Taurus. And what really does that mean? You know, Saturn, so there's a lot of movement. 
but Saturn in Aquarius you feel uh, like you are so different that your whole life is an act an attempt to fit in you know you feel like the outsider and you don't feel like everybody else you want to be traditional and you want the normal but eventually you begin to you begin to see that you have a different take on things you don't follow fashion as I say and you know your your this differentness as I want to call it actually gives you fresh perspectives and beneficial insights you know as you begin to, to trust yourself that you realize that this different viewpoint is enlivening it allows you to grow it allows you to see things the, the broader picture as we see the trees are not blocking your view of the forest you know you are able to point them in a higher truth like people who are around you you know when like when you take a cold shower and you feel energized and you open your eyes that's how you understand yourself when you have Saturn in um, Aquarius you know one day you remember what your mission is what you came here on earth to do and Saturn in Aquarius um, reminds you that that your ability to communicate your reality to a broad audience brings change to the world for the better so that you do things differently but you do it with a success in mind with achievement in mind you do things that brings change and remember for Saturn in Aquarius you know we we, we talk about the return Saturn returns because it takes 29.5 years nearly 30 years for Saturn to circle the zodiac the 12 signs and the first return of Saturn to your natal uh, Saturn it brings it brings you your duty your dharma you know what what it is that you are supposed to be doing what's your goal in this janam and the second Saturn return brings you your freedom so that understand that and even though Mars still wants to be rebellious in, in um, Aquarius Saturn the, the Lord of the house the owner of Aquarius is now there and Saturn is going to bring some discipline Saturn is going to understand himself and he's in his office he's very powerful so that if it, this is your first Saturn you are going to find out what your duty is if it's your second Saturn return it brings you freedom and you know we don't normally have a third Saturn return but those of us who fall into the third Saturn um, return you would find that you are of the higher um, self you are thinking about your liberation your moksha so this is what Saturn and Mars will bring to you beginning May 5th 2022 or at the end of the period that we are now looking for you will find yourself you know you will find yourself in um, Aquarius if this is your Saturn return and as I said Mars remains rebellious in Aquarius so that you may want to change up some things you might give a little leeway to Mars because you know you're neutral you know, he's not your enemy but he's not your friend either so that your discipline here is going to make Mars either work harder or you're going to lose a little bit of that energy and then we see Venus exalted in um, Pisces and Venus is exalted up to 27 degrees and this is Venus here so Venus is exalted for most of his stay in um, Pisces and Venus exalted is really a indicator of luxuries and beautiful possessions Venus is the Karaka for Sukha or comfort in life you know in addition Venus is also known as um, the Karaka or significators of spouse and relations between husband and wife so when Venus is in Pisces you know you feel tender and affectionate although you're, you're hard to communicate with there's a longing for something that is difficult to define and hard to satisfy so while you might want all the luxuries and you may get it you may not be satisfied um, borders and boundaries kind of blur under Venus and Pisces because it's so much it's so much that you lose consciousness really and it's not a mental conscience consciousness it's a physical consciousness in terms of 
what it is you really want because the abundance is so much you know the shadow side of of this position is allowing ourselves to be deceived as well as us ourselves being evasive you know it's but venus exalted in pisces does well in the sign it's devoted it's compassionate and capable in you know of sacrifice when venus is in pisces our desires are elevated to things more eternal so it's long lasting we do things that will bring joy to us in the long life or that we feel that we can you know leave everything in the material world now and devote ourselves to the divine we find the highest beauty in teachings from great spiritual masters because it's jupiter's sign and jupiter is there now so jupiter will expand our consciousness jupiter jupiter will give us that um that trait that resonates with us with our understanding through compassion um our imagination and you know our states of consciousness because pisces rules all things beyond reality the psyche retreats reflections spirituality dreams divinity um illusion um idealism and if you recall that the last year jupiter transited in pisces was in 2020 because it takes 12 years for jupiter to circulate the 12 signs in the zodiac so the last time jupiter was here was in 2020 and there were two stories that um came across us that stuck with me really and i think i've seen it recently on the internet because one of them um is surrounding the wiki dump um document dump by julian assange and recall that right now a few months ago continuing that you know people are now calling for the release of of julian assange and the other one was the earthquake in haiti where the compassion of 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 the world you know went out to haiti when it had that devastating earthquake in 2010 so that you know those are the things that i recall from the last jupiter transit so that let's see what this jupiter transit in pisces is going to bring to us is it that we are going to be shaken up is it that we're going to have compassion for persons around us more than ourselves so that you know some of these are some of the things that we are going to be looking at and then we have the next change is mercury in taurus mercury has moved away from um sun and rahu in aries and has gone to taurus and mercury in taurus is a, a messenger um who is more likely to make sense because Taurus is an earth sign. It's a sign of stability, of reliability. And you know, there's a thinking style here that Mercury would now go through because he's the planet of perception. And when Mercury is in Taurus, the mind slows down to take in the, the, the five senses or the sensory perceptions as we take. It's not going at a speed pell-mell, as we say, you know. Those with with this um this natal placement of mercury in taurus would have a kind of uh build up in impressions you build up impressions carefully you know because what what mercury loses in speed is made up for in thoroughness you are very detailed now so mercury in taurus gives us that reliability that stability in communication that you know mercury mercury here can always or also be a builder you know this mercury likes to learn by doing and to take slow steady steps towards a practical goal uh this mercury approaches progress with caution you know planning out each step to make it on sure to make sure that it's on solid ground because mercury is being influenced here by taurus and by venus the owner or the lord of Taurus so that you know as we say and remember the tortoise and the hare that you know the tortoise took patience to deal with what in front of him finished after the hare but he did finish his progress was slow but he did achieve his goals and that is what this um this planetary uh, movement is telling us uh, as at May the 5th that there is going to be movement there is going to be some seeking of something but we are going to reach our goals we are going to get success 
abundance is there beauty is there expansion is there mars might give us a little trouble still because he's in his rebellious mood but things are looking up things are looking up and again a word of caution depending on your um kundali and the houses that these planets currently um po posit for you it would mean a story for you in a particular house so please recall that request your report if you want to understand what is specific to you at zedamastrology.com before i close off on this video on the transit series i ask that you share sign up subscribe to my zedamastrology.com you can send me a message at zeda55 at outlook.com here you are going to get your tarot spreads your runes your chakras your crystals you are going to get your path for readings and tarot spreads bhagwan has once again given me the knowledge and the resources to bring these messages to you i hope like mercury it was not garbled or miscommunicated should you not understand anything i ask that you drop me a line at zero fifty five at outlook dot com so that i can have a conversation or dialogue with you i thank you for listening and i hope something new and exciting enters your thoughts and enables your dream be safe happy and healthy until we meet again see you next time bye